In this episode, we reviewed Love and Anarchy, which was released in 1973. This was directed and written by Lena Wertmuller, and it starred Giancarlo Giannini, Mary Angela Malato, and Lena Polito. Welcome to Robert Bellissimo at the Movies. This is a YouTube video podcast where we explore storytelling on film, as well as interviews with industry professionals who work in film, television, theater, among other areas of the arts. I want to welcome back to the show, writer, director, actor, producer, film critic. He does it all. Joe Crisafuli. Joe, welcome back. Thanks again for joining me. Thank you, Rob. Always a pleasure. Uh, if anyone who follows this show will definitely know Joe, because I think we've done so many Italian. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, great. We've done uh, we've done so many Italian films. And every now and then people will come and say, I'll watch anything with Joe, which is always. Oh, a great geez. <laughs> I was afraid you're going to say your membership and subscriber base went down every time. Yeah, right? No. <laughs> oh, good. Only up. Only up. <laughs> oh, but it's great to have you back. Thanks. And before we jump into this, let me just give a little plot synopsis for people who perhaps have not seen this or if you haven't seen it in a while. Uh, when a friend is murdered by the fascists, a melancholy farmer takes up residence in a Roman brothel as he and an anarchist prostitute plot to assassinate <laughs> Mussolini. <laughs> so had you seen this uh, film before or was this a first viewing for you? Those damn anarchist prostitutes, man. I think they have a union themselves. <laughs> no. um, yeah, I, I saw, you know, uh, like, I feel like a lot of the things you and I have, the movies you and I have talked about, I feel like um, I saw them all in the same period in college. Um, or, or, or I had seen them in bits and pieces on Italian television and just, while flipping through the channels. And then in college, uh, in this class I took that was basically about the language of cinema, uh, basically learning the uh, the cinematic language, I feel um, exposed me to a lot of the stuff that we're talking, uh, we've talked about. So I saw it then um, and, you know, it was uh, an environment that did not suffice. It was a very small screen, um, wondering about how the rest of our day is going to go and you know, knowing that there was going to be some type of quiz or something afterwards. But then I saw it, I I think I saw it at at uh, the Anthology Film Archives here in New York, which is, it, it's on 2nd Avenue and 2nd Street. It's this, I have to imagine it's a nonprofit. It's this amazing uh, cinema center for really the esoteric. And, and Lena Vertmuller really isn't esoteric, but it but they'll have things like um, Guy Madden's work. They'll have um, uh, Chris Marker's work, um, and things that just uh, certainly American audiences uh, don't find particularly sexy, but have a niche in a in a place like New York. Um, but that must have been like at least 15 years ago. So yeah, I, I, I had seen it before, but as is often the case with the stuff you and I talk about, um, I just get newfound appreciation upon reviewing. And what was it like this time around? Was it your feelings evolved at all or? Uh... Yeah, I mean, evolved, like I just think she's so wonderful uh, as a writer director. Yeah, I agree. And, 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 you know, not, not to make it about me or us, but I guess, you know, you and I are the ones that are talking about it and everyone sees things through the prism of their, their personhood and their character. Um, I, I can only, yes, my, my esteem has increased. And I think that's because maybe at the time of a young person in college or just out of college, as much as I, who, who, who was an aspiring filmmaker, as much as I definitely appreciated her points of view on important societal issues, whether it's uh, the sexes, whether it's politics or culture, her uh, motion pictures just weren't the the what the type that I uh, were trying was trying to make. Not that that in any way delegitimized them in my mind. 
Um, and now, uh, a great deal of time later, at um, the age of 40, um, <laughs> 39, <laughs> um, I, yeah, yeah, uh, 29, <laughs> yeah, or 29. Um, yeah, I, I just uh, maybe it's because you're you're the, the animalistic nature of your youth or, or you your need to run around and flex your own muscles um, that need maybe is gone and you can just maybe just more accept and and um, feel enriched by other people on their terms. Um, I just like her her work all the more. Um, and my the, we've, this is like the third I want to say the third movie maybe you and I have done on Lena Vertmuller and uh, um second yeah kinda, we didn't we did seven second. beauties we didn't do sw i did swept away with someone else but yeah this is our this is our second oh. work mueller yeah well that means I, I i've watched like four or five of her movies just because uh you and i started talking about them and i just she just kind of knocks me out every time now yeah me too and i i think i think i had va vaguely heard of her before 2020 when i started this show and when i had a co-host he you we noticed italian films were doing well and so you know he'd pick and i'd pick and then he was the one he was like let's do this seduction of mimi and i was like what is that i've never heard of it and i was blown away and we did that and of course seven beauties swept away so when i came to this i was a little nervous because i love those movies so much and they're such masterpieces and i thought you know, is this, is this going to, you know, am I going to be disappointed? Like, like how, you know, you got the same cast practically, I mean, in terms of yeah, Giannini yeah. and Mulatto. And I yeah. thought, what am I going to think? You know, me, you know, uh, is it gonna, is it gonna, not, not that you have to compare things so much, but I just love those movies so much. And to me, this really didn't disappoint. I mean, I was, I was blown away. I mean, it is, it is, it's truly powerful. I mean, it is, I mean, all her films are like that. I mean, they're just, this one just left me speechless, uh, particularly the end. I think that the second half, I mean, it's got a strong first half, of course, but that second half is literally, you know, life or death in, in every single uh, situation, every single scene. Uh, the, the characters are just pouring their hearts out to each other. And I think it gives people a lot to think about and, of course, feel. But I think it's a, a quite a, a complicated film. So I'm curious for you. I mean, what do you what do you take away as to what what this is all about? I mean, I know that's not a simple answer, but. <laughs> <laughs> you know, complicated and whatnot, I, I find so many of her movies are because Italy was a very complicated place at the time of her of her period, I think, of most notoriety, for sure, I guess, uh, the 70s. And, you know, I think I, I think I've mentioned before, you know, when you when we talk so much about Italian neorealism and that was a, a, a society uh, expressing what it had just gone through or in some cases what it was still going through when the movies were coming out before the war was even over really right, right. and then by this by the 60s and 70s you had an italy that was utterly transformed becoming a rich modern industrialized country and then come the 80s it was it was often uh, a country that that didn't like what it saw in the mirror anymore and uh i think in this the, with her movies i feel like her her t the tone of this movie and some of her others, I feel like they almost defy category. Um, oh, definitely. They're not really satire because I think she's really taking these the tone and these these things seriously. I mean, maybe that's not, maybe to, to call satire not serious is, it, it doesn't do justice to satire, but, and and it's funny, but it's, I, I feel that it's, it's the type of tone characterization uh you talk about that end what a doozy oh, oh my, god. my god and and i i feel that she's making it for an italian audience that's looking in the mirror and uh la almost laughing and crying at the same time uh yes. because i yeah. feel that tonally and thematically sh she's really showing the italian public themselves and i think they know that that what she's saying is true unless you're someone who's just a hardliner like say fascists or anarchists 
um, and just think she's probably an infidel. Both probably think she's an infidel, whereas people in the middle, as is, as is happening now in the United States, kind of get swept up in one way or the other, right, right. or swept away, pun intended. Um, <laughs> uh, and, and so I think that is really the heart and soul of this tsunami of stuff going on in her movies as regards to culture, whether it's sexual, political, cultural. Mm. Well, it's, she was so, I, that documentary that is fairly recently done on her life and career, she was so influenced on, you know, uh, politically speaking, but also co with comedy, right? So it's, it's that combination of, like you said, just, hitting all these different tones, whether that, you know, is conscious, you know, whether she intentionally tries to make it that way, or if it's just her organically in a combination of these, these incredible performances from. Oh yeah. <laughs> Giannini yeah. and it's Mulatto. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Just absolutely stunning. But I mean, you know, just from reading the plot, you know, you and I are both chuckling, right. But it is <laughs> the, the humor is so organic it's never forced it's just like life is like that right like nothing's just well i mean some things are just purely tragic but there's always something funny and tragedy and sometimes and and something uh uh tragic and comedy at the same time but what i found so interesting in this film is that it would have been so easy to to make this something like a clint eastwood kind of vehicle where it's like this like hero uh, anarchist comes and he's fearless and he's going to come to kill uh, you, you know the Mussolini the main villain in this piece and a very cut and dry you know where where the guy has no emotion he's just on this mission but what I love so much about what they do here is that they make it so complicated and this guy who's he's from a small town he's a farmer uh, he's, you know, and he goes to the big city, Rome, <laughs> to kill, to to kill Mussolini, teaming up with this with this prostitute, to to do it, and these anarchists, and he's terrified. I mean, he, I mean, and I don't blame him. I would be, <laughs> I would be shitting myself as well. I mean, he he knows the chances of survival are pretty much zero. I mean, you're gonna be this guy's heavily guarded. I mean, take a shot at him, they're. They're even likely going to, yeah, even if you succeed. Yeah. Like yeah, exactly. Out. Yeah. Even if you succeed. And so my impression was he was doing this for a combination of reasons because I don't, I didn't feel he was just a, you know, strong politically minded person. I mean, in terms of I've got to stop fascists. I mean, I think that's certainly part of it, but it was, it was also out of revenge because the police killed his friend who was an anarchist um, and also because he hated his life. I mean, he talks about how to Mulatto about how he felt like a slave, you know, he would rather be dead than have to live the way he's living. And and so and then, of course, on top of that, he's doing it because he want he you know, he hates Mussolini. He hates the fascists. But there I don't know how you felt about this, because she 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 explores at least in the films i've seen the you know the ones that she's most known for the ones we've mentioned she you know m m explores this machismo side of men and so i felt that you know he talks about having a a, a real low self esteem i mean he looked he talks about himself as not along the lines of not being a quote unquote real man and so and so what is a real man is it someone who just goes out for revenge and and has to kill someone we see that other fascist that they're hanging out with in order to get information to find out where Mussolini is and that guy's like machismo to the extreme I mean he's as toxic as one gets and of course he's picking on G uh, Antonio who Giannini plays and you see how angry he gets and even though Antonio hates him Sometimes when a bully picks on on maybe some of your insecurities, you start to think that maybe they're right. You know, maybe maybe the who a man is, is this fascist pig. Right. And so he has this choice, I feel, in terms of whether he should do this or not, once he falls in love with the prostitute. And and, you know, he 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 doesn't he doesn't have to do this. Right. I mean, it's not like he has to do it. He could stop and live with this woman or go home 
Uh, but again, it's so complicated because like, like he was saying, he'd rather be dead than live the way he's living. But on the other hand, um, he has such low self-esteem that he has to prove himself. But you would think that now that he's been in Rome in the big city, that he's fallen in love, that he would maybe find another way. But as we see in the end, he just, he, when they didn't wake him up, and the way he responded and violence and and basically has himself killed by saying, I was going to kill Mussolini when the cops come and he gets he doing like even, you know, viscerally, I'm like, stop, man, like you don't have to do this. And so I was curious if you felt this sort of machismo aspect to to the way maybe he felt he had to behave was a part of this. I don't know if that was something that popped out to you or not. Um. <clears throat> I actually uh, don't think so. Okay, uh, interesting. I don't. I, I think it's a very good question uh, based on what is on screen. Um, what and 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 uh, something I I I, I would like to uh, be happy to, to even talk about more is is how uh, Vert Mueller she wonderfully critiques humanity of which uh, men and women are both equally part by respecting men while being critical oh yeah uh, yeah critical sure. doesn't necessarily mean yeah. there's something wrong with you um you know there, there there was a woman in uh from california i think who was a small business owner i don't know i think it was like a dry cleaning or something and she was being charged she was being uh screwed by the bank at like 169 percent interest or something and she was one of the very few uh people who tried to overthrow american democracy january 6 and was killed uh being a violent someone who violently was attacking i believe the speaker of the house's office to overturn american democracy and was shot by the people defending American democracy, the people who were doing their job. And that's obviously a tragedy. Um, this was someone who was being screwed uh, and, and who had real reasons not feeling like a woman, a person who is doing an honest job that we all have need for. I mean, look, people, people, I mean, it's not curing cancer, but people use dry cleaning. It's, you know, um, and she's getting screwed. Um, if you are going to violently overthrow the democratic election of a president who is in the Democratic Party, uh, and your grievance is that you're being screwed by the banks, you're not that smart. That's what's so tragic about it. This right. crazy tsunami of shit um, that gets you killed. Um and and I'm not saying you know so the correlation for me uh, between that and 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 Janine's character, um, I, it's different in that, um, you know Mussolini's a fascist and he's protesting against a fascist. I personally don't think that the anarchists had the solution, even though I'm definitely anti-fascist. Right. And right. and assassination, especially in in something like this. You know, you better really it wasn't assassination, but when you have a revolution, say, in Iran or in Cuba, you better uh, you break it. You better know what you bought. Um, you know, the Shah of Iran definitely was a puppet of the United States. Uh, so was Batista in Cuba. But you better know if you're a young student who understandably wants to get under uh, out from under the U.S.'s consumerist influence you better have your shit together because and, and not just like a lot of young people and students are just a uh, champion revolution for revolution's sake, because I don't think the students who rightfully wanted to get out from under the Shah had theocratic uh, government on their mind. And so I think um, when you, when you see in, 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 in this motion picture <laughs> that this guy the women out of love allowed him to sleep in so that right. he would miss his appointment with assassination. Right. Um, 
and that he just it's so unnecessary he goes right. crazy and and you see the the carabinieri coming and it's just because they had the day wrong for their usual inspection i guess for stds at the at the whorehouse or whatever um and i think she's making a real comment not just on manhood maybe also on manhood you know men i think the same thing that uh that enables men that fuels men to go out and lean in and achieve for both the benefit and the detriment of society. Whereas maybe women more hold back and are more empathetic and, and, and try to figure out how their actions affect other people. Maybe they could lean in more. Maybe men could lean out uh, a little uh, back a little more. Um, I think the same thing that allows men to go out and achieve also is the thing that allows young men to join up for Al Qaeda and ISIS. The fact mm -hmm. that you're going to save the world and if there's someone to do it, you're going to step up. Whereas this guy had two women who cared about him enough to spare yeah. his life. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and even if even if, if if they didn't do it on purpose, you know, they the, the cops were coming for some unrelated reason. Even if he's being smart, he could have lived another day to fulfill his mission. And I think right. she's also making a comment about Italy at the time, whereas you have the fascist uh, past, which way too many Italians bought into, even though the narrative now is that Italians just suffered and they did, but too many bought into it. Right. And then you, and then that's countered by this extreme, uh, this extreme of anarchy with assassinations as if it's just going to be like, okay, well, he's dead. So now we can get back to normal. No, it's right. going to be more chaos. And of so that I think she's getting at all these things. All of them, exactly. The way that is funny, like, like Oscar Wilde said, if you want to tell people the truth, you better make them laugh or they will kill you. It's ah, a long answer, cool. but I think she, she uh, lends herself to, to long answers. <laughs> yeah, no, no, absolutely. No, I totally agree with you. Like, as I think it is, I, I didn't mean to imply that I felt it was it was only about this aspect of men because I I agree with you because I think it is so layered and it is just this like you were saying this maybe maybe men tend to or because also maybe because he's not he's not the uh, he's not let's say I mean I hate saying well educated because what does that mean I mean people can be yeah, yeah. not go to school and still be extremely well educated. Right. Uh, yeah. But, you know, he's not necessarily sophisticated, let's put it. But you're right. I mean, he seems to think that if he just does kills this one guy, he'll be everything will be solved. And he uh, plays it that way. He plays a guy yeah. who I don't want to say is like empty. I mean, he clearly feels a deep connection with his friend who was murdered. Yes. Uh, yeah. You know, like some animal. Um, but but Janini kind of plays him almost i don't want to say empty but he's almost like a blank slate that can yeah. be occupied with emotions and thoughts right. i think a lot like this woman i mentioned in california who's a real right. person going through real problems even when they ask him what does he feel how does he feel about the food and he's clearly eating really well and he kind of like almost doesn't know how to answer but he says right. it seems like it's very good and plentiful um he's someone that's ripe who who, who is feeling the legitimacy yeah. of pain whether it's familial or 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 brotherhood of this friend real suffering in terms of his economic status and issues um and yet intellectually maybe is not as sharp right for right. instance as as the prostitute right you know right i mean yeah you're i mean he's totally fueled by what you were saying his hurt his pain his anger there's so much so the fact that he snaps mm. Yeah, I mean, it, it, there's nothing. There's nothing to just give some kind of clear motive. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's. You know, I remember once they asked uh, at a press conference, they asked Robert Bresson in one of his films why someone did something, and he was like, "It's a feeling." You know, he's like, "Your best is your your guess is as good as mine." And I think you know, as much as we can sort of talk about a motive, uh, nothing static. I mean, things are just <laughs> too complicated, too emotional, and so. There's so there are so many. That's what's the beauty of this is that you could watch it again and see something else, and uh, go back another time and then see something new because it's uh, 
it's extremely emotional and it's not something that we could just talk about to make sense of, you know, because feelings don't always, don't always make sense. I mean, nothing is that simple, but, uh, but yeah, I, I agree. I mean, Janini does play it that way and it's so, it's so brilliant. And I love the relationship with uh, Mulatto that, that develops and I love her so much. And what a face. I mean, I I I don't mean that just in terms of oh this woman's beautiful. I'm saying like it is one of the most unique faces I have ever seen in my life. I mean those big eyes. I mean she's extraordinary, but and so funny. I mean she has this sort of casualness to her. Like even when he first comes and they're being coming acquainted, and you know he know she notices that he's looking at her legs and you know because she's a prostitute she's like you want to have sex come on let's go yeah no problem right like that's her way her way of being like hospitable which i was i was truly cracking up at that but we also have this love triangle that happens between the the other prostitute that janini falls in love with and Again, it's it's also like I don't think it's just oh Mulatto was jealous because she loved this guy. I mean, again, it's so layered because she admired what he was doing. Um, it was almost like she I mean, they said they were cousins just so that people didn't know what they were up to. But it almost felt like almost like like a bro like she like he was like a brother in a sense. Um, she she admired him. She she saw through she saw her so much of his problems, too. So which which also was funny because she was like who the fuck are the comrades sending me here <laughs> this guy who's scared this guy who's scared out of his mind um but there was when she says goodbye to him she kisses him for like 10 seconds like it's a little bit long right it's kind of <laughs> and i i just love the complexity of of that so how she felt exactly about him um is also you know up to up to the audience but she makes it political but also makes it so funny and also makes it so human and and these this this these three people have this really interesting you know relationships that that has developed uh so i mean was that was that something you saw did you see it as as a, a somewhat jealous or you know between her with this with these three people or how how did you take to that you know, that dynamic is definitely something that just, it grabbed hold of me. Yeah. Um, I did not see it as jealousy, but, you know, Vert Mueller is just so dynamic and amazing here as, as a thinker, as a humanist, as a writer, as a filmmaker, for all the reasons you you suggested. Um, and it's it's <clears throat> it's crazy to me to, to think that, at least what I've read, that she wasn't someone that was uh appreciated by feminists at the time right right, uh, right and 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 i can't assume to know what they were thinking in real time but you know we can only speak of what we see on screen which is preserved in whatever age you are but you have a writer director here who obviously is a woman um who is writing about as we've mentioned the complexities of a man as a human being as it, whatever his place in the societal spectrum is and what his sufferings are, his concerns, his goals, his sexual urges, who she in her movies has the audacity to suggest are legitimate, um, not legitimizing bad male behavior, but that they're legitimate. Um, she has a prostitute in Salome who just without even having to uh, proselytize about it clearly is a sharp cookie yeah um and what it what a tragedy that she that her lot in life her best option is to be a prostitute right. and that's something that's evident that she doesn't even have to speechify about not that it's something that's not worth speechifying especially if today in 2021 you have women who are forced feeling they're forced into prostitution but um she clearly is the person who should be probably the one carrying out the mission. She's so sharp. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, she comments know? on that. She's like, if only I could, if I knew how to shoot, I would go. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she clearly is is the one that that is in charge of, of all her faculties of, of seeing the forest for the trees. So I, I and, and on top of that, 
you know, it is three people in this triangle. I don't consider it a love triangle. I, I, I think that, that, um, that Antonio and, um, um, I think it's, yeah, I was trying Tripolina to, remember. yeah, Tripolina. Are at, yeah. Are at, they're, they honestly uh, love each other. Yeah. And I yeah. think the third person just doesn't know what to make of the situation, which should have been right. a clear cut case of a guy coming to do an assassination. Right. But what Vert Mueller gives us is a woman whose appreciation of this guy as dismayed as she is at this hayseed. Um, she clearly develops a respect and an admiration and a love for him as a human being, as a man, yes, even if it's yeah. more than fraternal um, and less than truly amorous. Um, and that's an amazing complexity of thought and appreciation for her fellow human beings, both right. male and female on the part of Vertmuller. Well, I love when that, that dinner scene early on, and it's done purely visually because we see Antonio looking at Tripolina, Tripolina, and then we cut back to Salome noticing. So again, she's not necessarily just making it so obvious. Whatever you, I mean, it's obvious about what Tripolina and uh, Antonio are thinking and feeling. But we got in the middle Salome, like you know, one can see perhaps jealousy, or one can even just see something like oh shit maybe you know like an uncertainty like where where is this gonna go because this guy's got a mission right we don't want to hold this up (laughs) so like again it's 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 layered it's complicated it's um it's ambiguous but that that scene towards the end right before she was gonna wake him up at 6 a.m and then tripoline is like you're not gonna wake this guy up we're gonna let him sleep there's no way you're gonna let this guy die like we all know he's gonna die this is pointless and, you know, she was ready to kill her. I mean, it, you know, she starts to choke her. I mean, that was such a great scene, but also funny at the same time, because once Salome gives in uh, to, to, she's like, oh, she, I just love what she says. She's like, God, us, us whores are so sentimental. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and I found, I found um, Vert Mueller's depiction of prostitution fascinating too. And I find the age we live in now fascinating where, you know, I don't know if if your um, um, social network feeds are the same as mine. I mean, I, 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 we just we just shot a feature that has uh, elements of uh, burlesque performers in it, right? And so, um, even though it's not necessarily about burlesque perform, I like to think it's as complex and layered as a Vert Mueller movie, but. Um, so obviously we, my wife and producing partner, we got to know a lot of people in that sphere. Um, I hope I'm not getting too much in trouble, but they are only so removed from people in, frankly, um, in the more, uh, erotic or, uh, sphere of people that may even consider them, call themselves sex workers. Right. Um, and it, it's 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 amazing when you think of whether it was uh, us growing up or or our parents and grandparents, and there was such a stigma, and rightly so. Like if there's trafficking going on, that's abhorrent. But we're watching so many cultural shifts now, where um, it's just way too prevalent. Um, the voice, the legitimate voices of of so many, mostly women saying, you know, we weren't all people uh, who came from a broken home running away from abuse. Um, I do have an issue with the fact that it is as 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 much of a feminist as I always have considered myself, as much as I believe that women should have obviously should have autonomy over the choices of their bodies. And that means everything. Right. Uh, I do have an issue with the fact that it still comes down to the financial exploitation of men's uh, hormonal needs and issues but when you think of um the fact that this is a woman at the height of women's liberation depicting um a brothel almost as if it's uh this wonderful sleepover or these women who clearly seem emancipated and independent and that wow it seems like it's really nice right um i wish i could ask vert mueller about that yeah um and it and it's amazing when you think of Salome, you're right. Like she's wrestling over this woman who loves him as a partner 
And I personally don't think Salome loves him as a partner. Um, I think, you know, it's it's interesting. Women's attachments to men, I think, often are much more multi-layered than men's attachments, as legitimate as they are. Women are so much about the metaphysical. Whether you're a woman dating an older man um, doesn't mean you have daddy issues, but maybe you appreciate the fact that, like your father, this is a man that maybe is wise and experienced. Um, yes. And I thought when, when, when they're wrestling on the floor there, what, it, what does Salome really feel mm. for him? Um, is it weird to say a sisterly affection? Cause they did have sex. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes, but I yes. don't think it's, I don't think it's the affection of a partner. I think it's like her trade for her. Having sex is nothing. Exactly. Um, it's a yeah. comrade. A, a comrade in arms who's doing yeah. something that she knows he's going to die and maybe having sex is a way for a connection and something yeah. she can do. Exactly. It, again, extraordinarily uh, layered yes. um, and hurt me yeah. a person ahead of her time. I totally, I totally agree. And I thought Tripolina raised some interesting questions there where she was like, where she's basically saying, you know, may, maybe more women should stop these men from getting up and doing this and, or maybe their, their mother should have. And then on the flip side, we have Salome who says, yeah, but then if, if no one went, then, then these people are just going to win. So again, it's, it's, it's another question that's complicated. It's like, what do you do in these situations? Do you just sacrifice your life uh, at, at the, ex, uh, at the expense of, well, for one thing, your life, but <laughs> your, your human relationships, or again, these are not easy questions to answer. Which is sort of bookended by that quote at the end. Right. Uh, by a guy who uh, was, I don't know, may, he may have been the maybe the most prominent anarchist at the time. He certainly published, um, I don't want to say the Bible or the manifesto, but he, he, he was the publisher of major, uh, major anarchist publication. And he, and he, I don't want to speak for him and maybe, and I'm definitely not the most learned person um, about these particular aspects of Italian history, although I've, I've definitely done a, a, a ton of my own research, even trying to write about it in um, extended form. Um, you know, he, he talks about how it's it's almost futile in real time, what they got, what they're trying to pull off, whether it's the acts of violence by the fascists against the people or the acts of violence and the attempted acts of violence of the people against those in power. Remember, uh, Italy already had a history at that time of assassinations. Uh, the the king of Italy, uh, uh, this only the second king of United Italy was assassinated in 1900 by an anarchist who came from New Jersey uh, to, to assassinate him. Um, and what does it do? It wasn't any of these things that ended fascism. It was right. U.S. involvement in World War II. Um, but the doing of it still makes these people saints in retrospect. Yeah. Right. But what does a united country of Italy actually accomplish in the meantime, other than um, a tsunami of shit as exemplified in in, in, the, in the end of the movie? Yeah. Right. I mean, it, it shows the complexity of like, what what is a hero? I mean... Yeah. You look what ha I mean, he is. I mean, I feel like he's heroic, but not in the sense that maybe we look at hero, hero, hero you know, someone who's a hero in a cut and dry way. Because I mean, they basically beat him to death, right? I mean, it's. I, I mean, it's not. They don't. Fortunately, it's not. They don't totally show that for like ten minutes, but they show enough of a beating, and then at the end, they're clubbing him over the head, and they. I, I mean, I don't know if they were just gonna go shoot him as they put him in a. He, uh, like a body bag, it looks like, or something like that, and or whether he was already dead at that point. But I mean, the 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 suggestion was that he was beaten to death, and and he knew this was going to happen. I mean, he it was as he was getting emotional, screaming at the police, "I'm, I'm going to kill Mussolini." I mean, and 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 Salome knows this, and she saw it happen to that other guy who she was talking about, who tried this before, and she gets very emotional about how he was killed. Uh, I, I think Vert Mueller is, I, I, you know, I, maybe I'm reading into it, but I think Vert Mueller is using that anecdote of Salome's previous life with this young boy uh, just to show that it, it, Italy um, history repeats itself. Um, and, and 
Italy, as much as it was a country that um, experienced an extreme uh, um, financial and economic boom and clearly transformed itself after World War II, was a country, frankly, up until now, unlike the United States, which um, is a country for all of its problems, I would say, until the 21st century, was a country that uh, was able to change and adapt for the better. And, um, you know, when, when Obama said that in his first uh, speech on election day, his first election day, one of my first thoughts, <laughs> and I'm so sorry, I'm an Italian citizen, I apologize. Um, one of my first thoughts was that Italy's not really a country that has shown its inability to do that, um, where it, it always changes for the better. And that's because I was alive during uh, both uh, the, the wars on the streets in Italy of both the leftist red brigades and maybe you could consider the right wing mafia wars. Um, and, and I think that's a comment she's making that Italy, at least the Italy certainly that she was living in is just destined to like a cycle, just repeat its mm, uh, right. sins against itself. That's a good point. Yeah, that that's a good point. It was, I also found it ironic that this guy who, whose life was so bad and he goes to, again, he goes to Rome, goes to the big city. Maybe this was the first time he's ever been in Rome. And as he says to the to the to Tripolina right before he falls asleep, he's like, you're the best thing that's ever happened to me. So it's like, and I love that scene because it's so devastating because you know it's the last time they're going to see each other. Uh, and, you know, they have these two days together. And you definitely felt that. You felt this yeah. guy's a <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, of course I did. Of course. Um, but that was, I just love that because again, it's just, it's so fascinating to me, but that this guy who's, who, who found something that was so beautiful, who could have stopped and just not given everything up. But as we've already talked about, it's again, it's not that simple. I mean, he's, he's driven by, revenge and you know the, the politics and and the war and uh uh emotions that you know it's it perhaps just doesn't have the intellect or or even necessarily the time to reflect i mean he's on this mission and that's that's that but i noticed that right before that scene with tripolina where he says you're the best thing that's ever happened to me she does uh there's about four or five shots of just rome so again, my impression of that was like, yeah, this was like, in a way, this is like the best time of his life. <laughs> this was the best time of his life. Again, so, yeah. so ironic. Which I think, again, just speaks to the the layers and, and cognitive complexity and empathy of Lena Vertmuller. I, you know, I, um, my, my family, um, we we you know we I grew up we had kind of a foot in in the states and a foot in in Italy, um, but I remember uh, you know in 1994 uh, my my dad uh, we, we we my family brought my maternal grandmother to Italy um, uh, as part of our usual uh, summer long trip my my maternal grandparents uh, my grandfather was a fisherman. Um, and, and my grandmother, um, was at home making sure the family was okay. And my, my grandfather had passed away, uh, about four years and, and Rome was always our center base because, uh, we would stay at a convent run by the nuns that were nuns of my mom. But it dawned on me then that my grandmother, who was, uh, in her mid seventies at that point, when she was looking up at the Dome of St. Peter's and taking it in, it dawned on me that I was 16 and I had already been here, done that. And this was her first time in Rome. She was Sicilian. And it just it, 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 it just it, it kind of rocked my world that I lived the benefit of 
such a force majeure thing as World War II. I mean, an act of God. If you're if you're a child during that, and it may have been an act of God, but you know, things out of your control. And so that's what stuck with me when he's this um farmer type of peasant, and he's in the big city for the first time, where the realities of his life are being determined. Even even the fascists that they're hanging out with says, Oh wow, you know times were better when we were when we had our march on rome in 1922 um but now we have to govern which I, ironically is what the taliban have been complaining about in kabul that wow times were great when we just had jihad but actually having to govern sucks um and and yeah and i think that again Vertmuller, what an amazing thing to say and to acknowledge when he says you're the best thing that ever happened to me perhaps the most popular certainly one of the most popular pop songs in modern italian history i think it came out in the late 60s by mina who was kind of like italy's frank sinatra um called il cello in una stanza the the sky within a room um is this beautiful song that pulls anyone's heartstrings especially women's about um when I basically when I when I'm in this room with you and I look up at the ceiling, it's as if the sky has entered our room. The guy who wrote that wrote it while he was in bed with a prostitute looking up at the ceiling. Oh, wow. And what's crazy is is it's so difficult for people to wrap their brains around the sincerity of what he felt and how that's tied to men's biology. Um, and for Lena Vertmuller to see this hayseed who, for all we know, it may have been his first time with a woman, but yeah. it's certainly maybe his first real connection right, with a woman, right. even though she's a prostitute, to say that and the utter sincerity of that scene uh, just speaks volumes uh, to her humanism and her acknowledgement of us as, as co-inhabitants on this earth, especially when everyone knows that this guy's about to bite the dust and right. the, the cause that might be worthy, but is it even going to solve anything, you know? Well, it makes me think about that scene with Salome when he sleeps with her. Like, you're, I mean, you're right. I mean, that could have been, <laughs> it's all, it's possible that this was like him losing his virginity, right? Because he was, at first he right. said no, and then he leaves and he's like, well, you know what? <laughs> Second thought. Yeah. <laughs> or and maybe it, it was yeah. just because she was a prostitute, you know, who knows, all right? But yeah. again, it's funny nonetheless. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I hate to be a skeptic, you know, a cynic or whatever, but it's like, here's this guy who's about to fulfill a job that he probably assumes is going to end his life. Right. And as a woman offering herself on a plate, you yeah. know, in wartime, you know, whether it's real stories we've heard from people that were our grandparents or, or old timers, or whether it's been depicted in cinema, you know, you think the world's coming to an end, at least for you and, and people's inhibitions go, um, maybe it is a hint that, it may have been his first time and I'm sorry, I have to, I have, I have to check into my other hotel or right. maybe just so uh, focused. I mean, honestly, the Taliban would be like this. He's so focused on his mission. I don't have time for anything right. like that. Yeah. But then his real, his real urges uh, make over. him back into the room. Right. But again, it, it's crazy to think how today these choices by an author uh, would probably be so dissected in a thousand different memes of polarities. Um, oh, she, yeah, she, she's a traitor to women's causes or men are pigs or, or this or that, or, or, yeah. you know, the left, the leftist uh, goal of getting rid of it, um, as opposed to what we used to all appreciate was coming to a table to talk about these complexities of the yeah. human condition. Absolutely. And you're right. I mean, the the people working there, like it feels like a family, like it feel like in the dinner, even though they're telling each other, fuck off and up yours and stuff. It's like a dysfunctional family. And you don't feel that anyone's necessarily miserable or I mean, you know, I mean, I don't think they're thrilled <laughs> about what they're yeah. doing. Right. But it it she doesn't. You're right. Like, at the you know, here we are at the height of feminism, 1970s and and this is like uh, people in a brothel who, you know, are are not 
are are not necess are not necessarily uh, in misery. You know, I mean, there is a sense of community there. I I felt I don't know. Yeah, how I I, fa- I fa- <clears throat> that's something I really uh, when I saw that I really would have loved to have a conversation with Vert Mueller about. You know, like it's one thing <clears throat> where I think I believe the seduction of Mimi that extraordinary uh, sex scene where he's seducing the wife of the guy that. who had the that. affair with his wife with that's such she's a, in this too. Yeah. She's in this yeah, one too. Um, yeah. Where ba- honestly, literally, literally on screen, she is so much woman. Um, <laughs> and, she's in, <clears throat> and she has to be woo. But yeah. once, once she decides she's in it, is he man enough to face that much woman and give her what also satisfies her, thereby satisfying himself. That's one thing. That's an extraordinary uh, humanist comment on shared humanity. But I even wonder, you know, um, in 19, I forget what exact year uh, Love and Anarchy takes place. 73. But I, well, they came out, you mean? Or, or when, no, it takes when, place? when it takes place? Oh, uh, I don't it know. The I'm, World War? Yeah, it's during during it. So, uh, I mean, it's, it's possible. It's po- actually, yeah. well, it's possible it's before. I mean, we know Mussolini's in charge, so it could have just been sometime in the mid to late yeah. 30s, you know. So, so, so it's obviously sometime between 1919 and 1944. Um, yeah, yeah. But for, her, for her to depict, and, and it's one thing for women now to say they're a sex worker and this is what I choose. Um, but if, you know, like Salome says, you know, in that period for for these women especially she who clearly ha- can do probably today could do whatever she wanted to have this be the most legitimate option i would be critical or i at least would ask vert mueller out of my due diligence why did you portray the nature of a brothel in the heart of rome as frankly something that seemed like a pretty nice yeah i don't know situation Right. Um, I really wonder what her, her thoughts on that would be. Maybe it would just be that, you know, this is something that uh, maybe that just wasn't a bone she wanted to pick uh, about the eternal and universal issue of women's rights and women's liberation in a male dominated world. Maybe that just wasn't what she wanted to depict. Maybe she much more just wanted to depict a woman given that circumstance taking ownership of yes. her own yeah. decisions um, because she really uh, could be seen like a mentor Salome. Yeah. For this yeah. Guy. Yeah. No, absolutely. I mean, even at, at, you know, at times she was referring to him as like, like a, like a young kid or like a boy, like, you know, she's yeah, like, we're he, saying he like, looks like Wolverine. So it's like, how, how young is this guy? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. Even though they look like, like, I mean, I know in real life they were, very close in age but uh i mean maybe that's just she just has that you know older sister motherly instinct perhaps but Tri- Tri- tripolina uh there was an element i found right before she first um is with when they're when they go when they go with that the fascist initially to find out more about where mussolini's going to be and she's she's hesitant to get involved with him like again it's complicated now is that out of fear or i mean it's possible that she associated sex with with um her trade that for now for it to be associated with love and connection was like you know was a daunting right so uh or or maybe maybe she looked maybe she looked at it in a bad way because of what she's in a position that she's she's had to be in order to maybe she's not happy with what she's what she has to do and so now to do that with him is going to ruin how she feels about him i mean again it's so you could you could look at it a million different ways right i don't know i don't know if that was something that stood out to you i mean because she did she did seem like you know let's not go here (laughs) <laughs> yeah. even though she wanted to clearly yeah uh you know my 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 producing and life partner is my wife <clears throat> um who's from the dominican republic and um she's a big fan of vert Mueller, and she is very happy to speak about sexual dynamics that 
um, are more traditional in the Dominican Republic, traditional sexual dynamics and conflicts that are still more prevalent in DR than they are, say, in, in the States or in Canada. And when and she looks, you know, she'll look at a, a movie by Vert Mueller, for instance, um, say the topic that you just brought up. And she would probably say that the sexual dynamics and politics in DR are more akin to what maybe they universally have been during the history of humanity uh, before the post-women's liberation of the late 20th, early 21st century in North America. Um, so, for instance, you may have folks in, in a situation beyond their control of poverty in the countryside of DR, like Antonio in Italy of that time, in the countryside of Campania, where I assume he's from, uh, maybe even farther south, like Basilicata, Vertmuller was, uh, I think, half Roman and half, um, I think one of her, I think one of her parents was from uh, Basilicata, which is even farther south. Yeah, yeah, she's um, southern, I know she's, yeah. Yeah, um, and, and frankly, what currency, for lack of a better word, do women have? And and my wife will tell you that certainly in her grandparents' generation, um, which is within our lifetimes, um, you may have the the fairly well-off guy from the city spending a weekend in the countryside to basically have his way. And, you know, if it's a regular thing with a particular young lady, um, you know what? I see your parents, that door is busted. You know, why don't I help you out fix that door? Um, and and one of these ladies may find um that it's a that he is a ticket out of that situation for herself, right. her family, right, and who will be their children. Mm. Um and 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 if you if you look at it from a point of view of some in the movie of someone who's a prostitute in a brothel, not a free person in the countryside who look maybe you see him unfortunately as a ticket out you still have the free choice but a brothel brothel it's your trade right to be a commercial transaction, um, the idea that you are going to allow yourself to be open to the possibility of real love. I imagine is probably not good for your mental health. Right. That's the exact it, one. You know, and so I, I, I can only assume that that's what it is. <clears throat> you know, it's like, it's so funny. Uh, a guy in a strip club who thinks the stripper actually likes him because she's being nice to him. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> or I don't know, maybe, maybe she, maybe you struck up a conversation. She actually does. But I mean, for God's sakes, you're, you know, you're a revolving door and you're here for a reason. Exactly. Um, it's just it, it, it's it's amazing the depths of human complexity. And again, I can't speak highly enough of Lena Vertmuller to epitomize that and give that flesh through her work. Mm. Um, no doubt, Tripolina obviously is catching feelings um, and is being protective. And and on top of that, the top of her situation, this is a guy who's going to bite the dust in a blaze of glory in two days. So. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's, it's, it's, <laughs> it's powerful. I mean, it's loaded with, like we were saying, complexities and possibilities. And so I'm looking forward to seeing it again. Cause I, I mean, I, like, I, I only, I went back to watch some scenes, but this was only my first viewing. So it's something that offers more and more with each viewing. So I know, I know you can, you can see this on canopy. For people who have Canopy, uh, which is free to get and is free to watch, if as long as I don't know about every city in Canada and America, because I know here in Toronto, as long as you have a library card, you can you can get Canopy. Uh, so I know you just gotta check it out to see if you can get it. But you can I watch saw it, it on Amazon. Okay, it's on Amazon. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean for like four bucks. Okay. Oh, to rent. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it's easy to find, but wow, what an extraordinary, what an extraordinary movie. Uh, what can you tell us a little bit about what's going on uh, professionally with uh, with you these days, yeah. Joe? 
yes, uh, we are in post-production for our feature that we shot um, the last third of last year called Children of God. Um, and we're hoping to finish it by the end of this year and make a festival run next year. Um, it's about an Italian-American actor in Queens who's on the verge of stardom, who happens to be the son of a Roman Catholic priest and nun. Uh, so sounds familiar. <laughs> we hope, yeah, we hope, I, I right. hope that uh, <laughs> sounds interesting to somebody. Um, I, it sounds interesting to me. Yeah, yeah I saw some oh, of the good. stills on IMDb. There's some some nice oh, stills you put up. So yeah, I'm looking Adriana forward to it. Adriana Serato was our DP, uh, an Italian Swiss um, and I cannot recommend her highly enough. She was an amazing DP that definitely did uh, worked closely with me as a director to fulfill my vision. She is a true artist um, and a wonderful friend and a wonderful person to work with. Yeah, the images are just gorgeous. Well, I'm certainly looking forward to it. And I know that on Instagram, if people want to follow you at Zio Chicho Cinema, I have that right, right? Yes. Zio Chicho. You're going to have yeah. to see how it's spelled. Um, maybe I should do something about that. But well, yeah. I'll, I'll leave the link in the description box so people can just click okay. on it <laughs> if they want to uh, follow follow Joe to see what he's up to and follow the status uh, of his film. So, Joe, thanks so much. This was another great chat and review uh, of a great film. So, thanks so much for coming on. Really appreciate it as always. As always, thanks for having me, Rob. And, uh, whether whether or not I ever come back, if you have me, thanks. Oh, you for will. You uh, thank you. <laughs> thanks for what you do. Um, it's definitely a, a great thing that you do. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. I want to thank all of my members on Patreon. If you're interested in becoming a member of my Patreon, head over to the link patreon.com slash Robert Bellissimo at the movies for full details. You can also leave a donation directly to my YouTube channel by pressing the thanks link, which you will find directly below the video frame, right beside the like and dislike comment links below. Click on the thanks link and from there, you can leave a donation if you choose to. And lastly, if this is your first time here on my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. It is absolutely free to do so. By pressing the Robert Bellissimo at the movies logo, you will see it floating above my head in the top left corner to your top left. In just a second, just click on that and then click the bell in order to get a notification every time I release one of my new episodes. Thank you so much again, everyone, and I will see you in the next one.